At events, we're often provided laptops for display purposes, sometimes to play a movie, sometimes to play a PowerPoint presentation. However, they're not always ready to go. And there's some simple settings that you can make in on a Windows laptop to make sure that you are successful. And we're going to show you those right now. Don't worry if you are on a Mac. If you look right up here, there's a link to our Mac video on getting your Mac show ready but this one is about the pc so let's get crack on hi i'm paul the outdoor movie guy and i've been in the outdoor movie business for more than 10 years and before that i was in information technology if you do have any questions about outdoor movies about laptops or anything technology related definitely put them in the comments below so when you're looking at a laptop for a presentation it's always best to have a laptop that has its own video card in it and not one with an integrated card. Uh, you definitely want to look for one with an HDMI connection, especially if you're playing copy protected content. Um, if you've got a VGA connection, if you're trying to play a video from a service, HDCP um, copy protected content, it may not play for you. So having that HDMI is very important. Uh, the other port I want to show you, we do have the HDMI, whoops, right there, the HDMI port. Uh, we also have a USB-C and you can do USB-C to an HDMI adapter. If you have the choice between both of them, always go for the native port on the laptop itself. Um, if you're using this one, you're going to have to use a dongle and, and then go in with the HDMI cable. That's adding another point of failure and you want to try and get away with that, get away from that. And sometimes on laptops like that, the, the native HDMI port will actually be using the video card and the other one will be using the CPU. So whenever possible, we want to pass that off to the graphics card. So with any presentation that we do, we do want to make sure that laptop is plugged in. When you're running off battery, you do have the higher possibility of the laptop turning itself off. Plug it in, the graphics card will run at a, a higher level and you'll have less issues. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in my adapter. I have the original power adapter right here and this is the power and I'm going to plug that in. Now I've run into this issue before so I do want to let you guys know about it. If you buy a aftermarket power adapter, they don't always give clean sound. Or if you have a damaged power adapter, what will happen is you'll sometimes get a buzz in your audio and it's the weirdest thing. You, you, you change cables and everything else and what it turns out to be is a, a damaged power adapter or it's an aftermarket power adapter that doesn't um, provide the power in the way it needs to. So any anytime you're doing this, try and use the original power and that's going to hopefully uh, minimize any sound issues you may have and then i'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in my hdmi cable hdmi cable if you're connecting to a uh, hdmi switch and you're pulling sound from that so the sound and the video is going to come through this cable however if you are plugging this directly into a projector and you're pulling the sound from the headphone jack then that would be going to your mixer and that's how you'd be getting sound. But we're going to go ahead and plug that in. And let's get this booted up. Okay, I just logged in. Let's switch over to our screen. And have a look at the first settings that we want. So we're going to look at power settings. We're going to look at sound notifications. We're going to look at notifications and how we duplicate that monitor and then we're going to have a quick talk about media types that we're going to play and then look at a couple of apps that we can use for media playback. First thing we're going to do is look at power settings. I find the easiest way is just to come down here and type in power and sleep settings. So here we are with the power and sleep settings and I definitely want to make sure that when I'm doing a presentation it's not going to be turning the screen off and it's not going to be going to sleep. So when it's plugged in, which will be during our presentation, I like to set these both to never. And then when on battery power. So again, when we're doing a presentation, we do want to be plugged in while we're doing the presentation. However, we also want to make sure that if that power accidentally gets knocked out, um, the power settings are set in such a way that we can at least get through our event before it would go to sleep for any reason. So um, say my event's a 45 minute event, I'm gonna set this 
to an hour and then I'll set the other one to an hour and then we're set the event will happen and it will not be turned off let's have a quick look at our sound options and if I go down to advanced sound options I've already no I don't have it turned off so um, system sounds that's beeps clicks things like that we want those turned off as well so we'll go ahead and turn off the system sounds and then we're going to have a look at notifications. So if I start typing in notifications and actions. Perfect. So here we are in the notification section. Get notifications from apps uh, and other centers. We just want to turn that stuff off while we're doing a presentation. You don't want things popping up in the corner. You don't want any of those notifications when you're doing a presentation. So that is where I do that often. These will be set as well. Um, the Windows welcome, suggestions, getting tips, all of that's checked. We want all of that stuff unchecked. You don't want that stuff popping up when you're doing a presentation. Within this section, you're also going to see um, Focus Assist, which I've just clicked on. And you can set up certain times that you turn things off. Um, when duplicating display, alarms only, all of this stuff can be turned on when you're playing games. You can have it automatically turn that stuff off. I like to go into the notifications and just turn them all off. And then you, you're not worrying, oh, did I do this? Did I do that? You know it's off 100%. Two different ways to do the displays. That is a mirrored display. So what you see on your laptop is what you see on your external display. So that would be mirrored and then you can or extend the desktop. So on an extended desktop, you'll see one set of stuff on your laptop display and then an extension of that desktop, another screen, which is completely separate. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, some applications like PowerPoint, you can have a presenter display and then the actual display itself, your show display. If you're using something like ProPresenter, the same thing. ProPresenter is used for video display. It's used for churches use it for doing uh, video and various things like that. And the same thing, the, the page you're looking at is where you're organizing all the videos and then that extended display, that projector, that HDMI switch, whatever it happens to be plugged into, that's what people are viewing. That's what they're seeing. So you get to organize here and display there. So that's a preferred way of doing it whenever we can. And let's have a look at that right now. Very cool. So the quickest way to get to display settings, actually there's two ways. You can always go down to that, that start menu and type in display. Or if we right click on a Windows desktop and hit display settings. And right now we are in the mirrored display. So what I see and what is on that second display are exactly the same. So if we want to change that, we would scroll down and we would want to change it right here. So where it says multiple displays, duplicate these displays. Nope. We want to extend these displays. Perfect. So now we have two separate displays. You'll notice that on the display you are now seeing, which is my secondary display, there is no start menu on that display. So all we're going to do is we're going to launch one of those applications that will use that extended display uh, well, and that is uh, ProPresenter. You could do it with PowerPoint or whatever you happen to be using. So I'm opening up, opening up ProPresenter right now. It's going to open up on my primary display. So ProPresenter is now launched and right here you can see on this primary display, I have ProPresenter up. If I click onto my secondary display right here, Nothing is shown right now. So on the laptop right here, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn on audience. Change back to that other display. And you'll see that is now playing. What this is, is it's one of our pre-shows. Uh, this pre-show is set to change every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, it's going to go through um, within ProPresenter. What I could also do is have videos queued up there and various things like that. But right now we're just using it for a little bit of a pre-show that we would use maybe before a movie or something like that. Say for whatever reason, PowerPoint, ProPresenter, whatever crashed. So if it goes ahead and crashes and I'm going to simulate that by just turning the display off right here. 
whatever you have your background image set to is what's going to be displayed. If you're doing a presentation for a movie night or something like that, you could have the logo set as your desktop background. And if you need to do that, very, very simple. Save it to your, your PC at 1080p JPEG file. Right click on that JPEG file, select set as desktop and then that will be your desktop background. So at any point, if any of your apps crash, instead of seeing your messy desktop, they're gonna see something that is actually related to the event. Uh, you could even make that a black screen, but that can be a little bit confusion. You may wanna throw a pixel in there or something so you know exactly what's going on, um, that it's not a disconnected cable or something like that. So I hope that helps um, with the dual displays. So let's talk about media and what we want to be playing. If you are on a, a laptop and you have video files, let's try and play those video files from the local PC whenever possible. If you are attaching a drive, let's make, make sure it's not uh, an old style spinning drive that can be a little bit slower. Um, depending on your media type, that could really be problematic when you're trying to play it. And please, 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 we're gonna make sure that we are not streaming at a live event. It's never a good idea. You want that media local whenever possible to play it. If if you're trying to play, um, of course you'll have movie licensing, but if you're trying to play a movie from like Disney Plus or one of those other legally obtained ways to get a movie, you, there is the option to download it. Whenever possible, let's download that movie. Let's not stream a movie when you're at an event. If it's a mission critical thing, we, we want to avoid the streaming at a live event. If you're doing Google Slides or anything like that, let's just try and get everything local and then you're going to have a smoother playback and you won't have to worry about the internet. What often will happen is you'll possibly be at an event and uh, they you want to stream the movie, but then you've got you know 20 teenagers who are all on that same network and they're doing whatever they are, doing stories and all of that, and all of a sudden that video playback is seriously impacted. So whenever possible, play it local and you can have a much, much better success rate. So let's recap one more time. If you're using a laptop, you want that media local, you want to be changing the power settings so they never turn off the hard drive and never turn off the screen. Turn off those sound notifications. You want to turn off other notifications, the pop-ups, because you don't want them showing in the middle of a, uh, a presentation and just make sure it's plugged in as well. So I hope that really helps. Um, like I said, there is a video up here. If you're on a Mac, definitely check that one out. We have a ton of other videos. Definitely check those out. Um, let me know, like, subscribe, give us some love. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye.